Greetings, friends. Make sure you continue to watch this video to the very end because we got some free things that we're gonna give away to some of you. Stay tuned. We hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving. We sure did. We did, we had a really good time. And uh, Thanksgiving is actually my favorite national holiday. Did you know that? I, I think I knew that. <laughs> but tell everybody else why it's your favorite national it's holiday. It's my favorite national holiday because it's to, supposed to be a day that we set aside each year to give thanks to God for the blessings that he has given us. And it's important to do that, that we gather around together, we get together with family, but that we also acknowledge God and all the things that He has given us. And it's sad that a lot of people miss the meaning of this day. They get caught up in the getting and the buying and looking forward to all the deals, as well as they get hung up on various issues and debatable matters and drama and all that, and they totally miss out on the meaning of the day. It makes you sad, I can tell. It does, it's crazy, yeah. But anyways, <laughs> we were celebrating it and being thankful to God for all he's given us. Because he's given us a lot. He sure has. And speaking of that, we got to really enjoy one of the blessings that we got to enjoy for Thanksgiving was some of our turkeys that we raised this year. And uh, you actually prepared them. I did. I prepared one of our turkeys. I actually did a side-by-side -side comparison this year. I bought a turkey from the store and one of our turkeys and I brined them in my brine and apple cider and everything. And then I stuffed them with butter, covered them with buttered cheesecloth, and baked them both the same exact way to see like a side-by-side -side comparison. And they were really good, uh, but I could tell which one was the one that we raised. It just had a, that different kind of flavor. It's just hard to explain the, that flavor that comes from just when you raise something yourself, especially if it comes from like a heritage type breed, I just think that there's a distinct flavor in there that just... Mm, it is. It, well, the fantastic. first time we raised turkeys was last year, and we had our first turkey last year for Thanksgiving, and I'm normally not a big turkey person. Mm -hmm. And I was like, eh, hey, I don't want any turkey. And But they're like, just try it. I mean, I cooked that one too. I should, you know, try what I cook. And I tried it, and there is it's a totally different flavor than one from the store. And if you want to see the process, if you missed that video, check it out where I shared our whole story about raising our Thanksgiving turkeys. Uh, just check it out. And a lot of people were asking in, in the comment section about that video saying that, oh Mike, you should have saved some birds that you can breed. Well, we actually did. Josiah had, he had picked them out. He had some that were his favorite and he said daddy can we save these and I was like yes we can save these and we did so I brought the turkey shawl over from the pasture set it up here closer to the house like we brought all of our animals in and bring them closer to the, to our home at this time of year just so it makes life so much easier tending to them we were able to set up the turkey shawl in the fencing, electrified fencing, with the turkeys that we had saved for breeding purposes. And so. I will say, I really like having the turkeys around. I mean, they'll just follow you <laughs> around, you know. And it, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and it just, somebody else said in the, in the comments in the last video that they worked on a turkey farm. And when there's no turkeys, it's lonely. And that's right. like. Because they just, one day they were just out walking around the homestead. And you could tell everywhere they were, even right outside, because they were making all their little noises. I love it. And without it, it is. It's like 
a little sad without the sound. Some so. people often say, how can you be on a farm and sleep at night and hearing all the sounds? It's actually really enjoyable yeah. to hear all the sounds of life. It's just, it's just neat yeah. to hear the, the rooster crow and the ducks quacking and the turkeys and the cow. It's just, it's just, it's just lively here and the kids too. <laughs> Yeah, kids too. <laughs> Just kidding. And the turkeys, we enjoyed some for our family for Thanksgiving, and we were able to sell a number of others to some other families. Uh, Bradford Market is one of the places that carries a lot of our produce in Davidson, North Carolina. And we also had a number of inquiries about people interested in getting some Thanksgiving turkeys from us. And I was like, oh, I wish I would have known ahead of time we could have got them for you. So with that, for 2024, we're going to go ahead and create a waiting list, a pre-order list for people who want to get Thanksgiving birds for us. We're also going to do some for chickens and ducks. So if you're interested in that, make sure you put your email in the link below. And you're local to the Charlotte area because you know we're not set up to be like delivering yes. all that yeah. shipping or anything so what we'll do is we'll arrange like a pickup day for those times so just make sure you click put your email if you're interested and we'll get you more information on that and speaking of chickens you butchered some of those recently too and Sayla made some really good fried chicken that you were raving about. I sure was. It was fantastic. And you know what? I didn't even ask her to do it. She just totally took the initiative to make fried chicken out of the chicken tenders and uh, also some chicken livers yeah. on her own. And I was like, this is fantastic, Sayla. Way to go. I know. <laughs> it was yummy. She'd never done fried chicken before. <laughs> but. She just went to a recipe and found it on her own, and that's what she cooked for dinner that night. And uh, it was really good. Yep. All right, well, let's see what else we got going on here. I got a lot of things to tell you guys about, because <laughs> it's never dull around here. Oh, watch out, he's in meeting mode. <laughs> this is a meeting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, last week I had the opportunity to be on the Airy Brothers podcast. And I do enjoy going on podcasts and, and getting a chance for people to ask me questions. It, it's really neat. I never know sometimes what people are going to ask me, but it was really neat being on that podcast. And coming up this week, I'll be on the Angry American podcast with Chris Weatherman. And on that podcast, he talks about issues affecting America. He's had some permaculture peeps on on there as well, as well as veterans. So we'll just have to see what we dive into on that podcast. It should be a good time. Should be a good time. Should be a good time for sure. And speaking of Chris Weatherman, I actually met him this past year at the Mountain Readiness Expo that took place here in North Carolina. The first annual. It was the first one, annual one, and it's the first major conference that we've had in this area is like right in our neighborhood so it's just like wow that's really cool and we're really excited about that so in 2024 we're planning to have that event again and uh right now there's a sale going on if you buy two tickets you get one free and that's going on from now until november 30th so make sure you take advantage of that promo but even if you miss that one, they have early bird tickets, which is still a great price for a two and a half day event. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm excited about going and uh, I'm gonna teach a class, I think on fire cider immunity stuff. And you're gonna teach a class maybe on how to build a homestead. Um, With zero or little money. Yeah, <laughs> little to no money. <laughs> we know that, we've yeah. done that. So it should be a really good time. And this event, Mountain Readiness event, is it's, it's different than all the other events we've been to because it's really like homesteading meets prepping meets tactical kind of stuff. So lots of different vendors there, lots of different classes, like so many different things. And uh, you, there's hands-on classes too. They're extra, but you know, for the event, they have classes for everybody too. That just so much information. And Daniel Salatin it will be joining us at this expo and he's going to be doing hands-on chicken processing and I look forward to diving in and helping him out with that. Super excited and, and looking forward to that event and, for sure. And Kaylee from the Honeystead, she's going to be there. There's, it's just going to be a great event. And this past year, 
one of the things that got me out of my comfort zone at this expo was I had a snake around my neck. So if you missed out on that video, make sure you check that one out too. Oh, another great thing is they have lots of stuff for kids and kids 12 and under are free. So I want to throw that out there, but the snake encounter type thing. Mm, our kids love that one. They had a snake walks. They went back down and looked around for snakes. Um, there's uh, forging as well. Yeah, the uh, forging. They're, they're forging. They have this really cool idea for um, like a forging competition going on this coming year. It's a lot of exciting stuff. And speaking of Daniel Salton, he's going to be at the Mountain Readiness. He's scheduled to be there, but. He and I both are scheduled to be at the APA conference in January. And APA stands for American Pasture Poultry Producers Association. Yes, <laughs> there's a lot of P's there. <laughs> A-P-P-P-A. <laughs> but this will be my first year at this event. And who is this event for? This event is for anyone who is currently or plans to raise poultry to make money from, wants to make some profit from raising poultry, whether it's chickens, ducks, turkeys, or whatever, this conference is for you and for me because I want to learn more to make more money from raising these animals. And whether you're, you have zero experience at this or you've been doing this your whole life, there's a lot you can learn from speakers from various experience levels and, and just people like Daniel Salton and others who can pass on and share this information to help us all to be better. And there's gonna be 33 sessions over three days. And I plan to be there to talk about marketing with video and digital content, as well as raising ducks for profit, as well as raising heritage chicken so I'm looking forward to being at that conference and it's going to be at Texas so I encourage you all those of you who want to make money from poultry come join us out there and speaking of Daniel you and Daniel Salatin have been working on a project together haven't you <laughs> no <laughs> we can share we are almost done with this project that we have been working on I'm going to announce more about that soon but this is just a teaser for it, just a little taste of it. I personally am looking forward to this series. Why? Because over the years, as I've been running my homestead, I first started with the big mistake of trying to do everything myself. And that's a big mistake because one, it's not a sustainable thing to do. And if you are down, which happened to me before, I was down for like two weeks with the flu. And if I didn't have anybody that was available that knew how to help me, well, the place would just collapse. Thankfully, I started incorporating my family early on, starting with my wife and children, helping out with various aspects on the homestead. But now, these past two, three years or so, we've got to the point where I'm doing everything I can, my wife is doing everything she can, my children are involved in doing various things on the homestead, doing everything that they can. I'm at the point where I need, we need help that goes beyond just me and my household. So I need to know how to successfully build a team that will help us to build our overall operations so that way we can do various things here on the homestead, the farmstead, to make it really a successful farmstead. It takes a team effort, which is why I'm looking forward to hearing Joel and Daniel and how to build a successful farm team. But also, we have some videos coming up of talking about our second year. <laughs> And yes, the... I know. Everybody wants to know in the comments, when are you putting up your second yurt? When is your daughter going to have a bedroom? When is this? When is this? When is this? I've been wanting to know too. Yeah. <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> We've had a number of challenges and trials associated with that, but we'll talk about that in an upcoming video. Uh, as well as a cow update with our cow. Did we decide to keep her? Or did we decide to get rid of her? Some of you know about our video of our challenges with the cow. So you just have to wait for that as well. Also, I'm gonna do a video about what to do with all the leaves that you may be dealing with this fall. We, are, we have a property that's mostly wooded, so we have to deal with a lot of leaves. So what do you do with those? I plan to talk about that soon as well. And if there's any other topics that you would like us to cover about homesteading or about home or about kids or any of those things, please let us know in the comments. And uh, another thing that you guys love to see is Hezekiah, <laughs> is this baby that has this 
contagious smile <laughs> that we love and it has been a joy having him around and i hope it's been a joy for you to see uh, he's been eating more you know food here recently i've been making butter and cottage cheese from our cow's milk and let me tell you he loves butter and cottage cheese he's a butter boy he is a butter boy he's he's after my heart he's no, he takes after his mama on that one but it's been super great to see how he's become more interested in eating food all righty and that is just about it but the I, meeting shall come to a close <laughs> i did mention earlier in this video about giving some things away and uh, if this video does well and you guys like it plan to do some other videos where we give stuff away at the end as well we'll see how it goes but for this video what we're giving away is we're gonna give away some tickets to the APA conference and if you're interested in that conference in the comment section below just type in Texas and then we will randomly pick some winners for those tickets and we're also gonna do a giveaway for the mountain readiness tickets for that event as well in North Carolina so if you are interested in coming to that conference just type in NC in the comment section below so looking forward to having some of you join us out there and it'll be a great time all right I'm done talking time to get back to work bye guys oh and I almost forgot to find out if you are a winner well keep checking back to this channel and we will notify the winners via your comment in this video we'll let you know we'll give you instructions on what to do from there and I'll also announce the winners on a YouTube post on this channel there you go best of wishes to you guys